Mini episode 836 of the FDH Lounge is brought to you by Sportsology, delivering unconventional columns and webcasts about sports, TV, music, movies, and more. Follow them on the web at sportsology.com. The FDH Lounge. You want to schedule your life around it. A long time ago, on a gloomy, wet Cleveland spring night, two men stand alone amidst the late night drizzle. Their voices echo across the vacant station parking lot as they debate the merits of the great American radio show that have been missing for far too long. On that night, an idea was born. That idea became the FDH Lounge. Welcome to the FDH Lounge. Welcome to FDH Lounge mini episode number 836. I'm FDH managing partner Rick Morris here with our preview of Better Call Saul episode 3.6. Here are the top five developments. Number five, Huel Babineau, everyone. At the start of the series, it was easy to imagine how much fun it would be to see Jimmy and Mike form the basis of their working relationship, but it's also turned out to be fun seeing them interact with others that would be a part of their circle on Breaking Bad. Here we see the first appearance in the prequel years of Huel, who would serve as Saul's bodyguard and the world's unlikeliest pickpocket. He deploys his skills by dropping Jimmy's cell phone battery into Chuck's pocket in the stairwell, forever earning Jimmy's gratitude and setting the stage for all of their future adventures. Number four, the corrupting of Francesca begins. Thus far, she's simply been handling standard law firm duties for Jimmy and Kim, but here she foreshadows her duties in Saul's office by serving as a vital cog in Jimmy's scheme against his brother. Rarely do we find occasion to take issue with what is and is not shown, but it would have been nice to see her reaction to her first time of being asked to do something skeevy. Keep in mind that Chuck was deserving of all that Jimmy arranged for him, but Francesca really has no way of knowing that yet. Number three, time for some tough love from Howard. The preview for next week shows him standing up to Chuck about the mounting cost of his vendetta toward Jimmy, but of course we don't know yet if he will stick to his guns. He seemed to have a sense of foreboding about Chuck's participation in the hearing, which may leave him wondering if he should have trusted his gut and tried harder to sideline Jimmy's obsessive older brother. Howard can make some cold, decisive calls, but we've never seen him make any with Chuck, who he regards as a mentor and a brilliant legal mind suffering from an unfortunate condition. At the same time, though, Howard has always put HHM first with his key partner now revealed as the emperor with no clothes. Chuck may taste some ruthlessness from the one man who's always been in his corner. Number two, Kim acts on her choice to go all in for Jimmy, and now there's no turning back. All throughout Season 2, she kept recoiling at some of the ethical decisions that Jimmy made, but now we've seen her act on the decision that she made in Episode 3.3 to do whatever it takes to save Jimmy. Again, as with Francesca, it would have been interesting to see a bit more of her before going into court, maybe working hard to psych herself up. She was shown to be a bit nervous, but that seemed to be entirely on behalf of Jimmy, as opposed to her crossing the Rubicon in terms of defending Jimmy's ethics. But regardless... Now she's done it, assisting fully in Jimmy's game plan and also lying by omission to Mesa Verde about the truth of Chuck's allegations. None of this is to say that she's not justified in fully fighting back against HHM for their attacks on her and Jimmy, but her actions do not at all square with her previously stated standards. Number one, speaking of no turning back, the brothers McGill are almost certainly torn apart permanently. This moment has been coming since the penultimate episode of Season 1 when Chuck was unmasked as the man working to hold back Jimmy's career. And now Jimmy has deployed every powerful weapon that he could use against his big brother, from unmasking his condition as a form of mental or psychological illness to humiliating him in front of his close business colleague and the ex-wife that he still clearly loves. We've gone from seeing Jimmy take total care of Chuck in Season 1 to feeling torn about being estranged from him in Season 2, to seeing him pull out all the stops after learning how Chuck took advantage of his concern and wiretapped him in an effort to destroy his law career. So Jimmy responded in kind, and thanks to Chuck's self-fulfilling prophecy, is now well on the path to becoming Saul Goodman. As a matter of fact, that name was blurted out during next week's preview, but it's almost certainly a misdirection given that the show has done such a slow burn on this point on Saul's journey. Jimmy would surely have saved himself any other way if he could have, but Chuck left him with no other options simply by dint of being a brilliant, determined foe who was already fighting dirty. This is a victory that will leave Jimmy feeling hollow, 
a prelude to the soullessness of Saul, but as his windbag of a big brother said, let justice be done. Thank you for joining us for this mini-episode of the FDH Lounge. As we bring the show to a close, we would like to extend our deepest gratitude to NBC, CBS, ABC, Fox, all clear channel affiliates, TNT, TBS, USA, UPN, Deadspin.com, YouTube.com, YTMND.com, MySpace.com, various blogs, Fox News, CNN, CNBC, MSNBC, IamBoard.com, Billboard.com, Google.com, ESPN, ESPN2, ESPN News, ESPN Classic, NBA TV, NFL Network, Sports Time Ohio, Athlon Magazine, Comedy Central, Cartoon Network, The Boomerang Channel, QVC, BET, The Spice Channel, Steno Notebooks, Manwich, Paper Mate Office Supplies, Waitresses, Strippers, Bartenders, Garbage Men, Janitors, Microwave Popcorn, The Writers of The Office, Scrubs, Entourage, My Name is Earl, Oz, Metalocalypse, and The Boondocks, Aquafina, and The Periodic Table of Elements. 